Hi, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on our first CAST webinar series for 2017. Um, as Adriana mentioned, we're going to be talking about controlling your costs with water conservation. So I hope that you all will take some great tips. Listen in. Don't be shy to ask questions. Um, you can type them in the box, as Adriana mentioned. Um, and today we will be um, hearing our webinar from Mr. George Newton. He is, he is the Managing Director of EarthSmart. They are also a partner with Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, as well as a member of CAST. They sit on our governing board. So we're very excited to have uh, George here with us to give us this amazing presentation. So George, I will take it to you to move forward and start our webinar. All right. Thank you, Denise. Hello, everyone. Thank you. I want to join Denise this morning and thank you for attending this water conservation webinar um, commissioned by CAS and compiled by EarthSmart. Again, my name is George Newton, and I will be your presenter today. All right, let me start by setting the context for this message and guide you to the place from which inspiration for its creation was birthed. EarthSmart is a distributor of eco-friendly products, with its current focus being on water use efficiency. Water use is an important point of focus, particularly since access to portable water is a common and growing worldwide concern. This area, however, is often not given the level of attention it deserves due to a lack of awareness or conscious recognition by the users on how impactful their individual wasteful use of this precious resource actually is, especially in a commercial setting where its value is measured mainly in dollars and cents and in many cases accounts for a small percentage of overall expenditure. We consumers of water are, however, victims of our very nature, assigning worth proportionally to what we pay. But in the case of water resources, policy, made, policy makers and governments are driven to apply subsidies and shield consumers from the true costs associated with portable water production and supply. Because it's, it's a basic human right for each person to have access to fresh water. We recognize the importance of partnering with stakeholders such as CAS if we are to help positively influence behavioral change in the area of water use. As you all know, hotels are a vital part of the travel and tourism landscape, offering accommodation and other guest services to those traveling for both work and leisure. But in making attempts to attract and satisfy the needs and most times the wants of guests, you become large consumers of water. Today we seek to bring to the fore an awareness for water conservation and aid you in achieving your goals, whether they be guest satisfaction or simply fulfilling your family's requirements. All this as you manage costs associated with portable water supply through demand management. These are easy to implement cost-effective measures designed to minimize the impact you and your hotels have on local fresh water supplies. Now, our discussion today will be on measuring how much water is being used on hotel properties. We'll briefly examine where this water is being used and how to make operations more sustainable. This slide gives you an overview of today's discussion. All right, let's get started. It's important to understand how much water your hotel is consuming and how it is divided amongst the various usage, such as the guest rooms, common area restrooms, pools, kitchen, etc. And a great place to start is with a thorough evaluation of water use on the property, also called an audit or site survey. This audit of your property will reveal opportunities for reducing water use and provide the foundation for developing a strategy. Creating a plan for your hotel and identifying areas for water efficiency improvements with expected costs and benefits will help guide implementation. I have a question for you. Um, on the side of your screen you should see a comments, a comments area. Uh, what area within, and you can put your answers within the, in that area, what area within a hotel operation do you think uses the most water? Do you think it's the kitchen, the landscaping, 
cooling and heating, guest rooms and restrooms, laundry or pools. Again, th those options are kitchen, landscape, cooling and heating, guest rooms or uh, restrooms, laundry or pools. Now I ask this question because I, I just want to find where your head is at right now and what most of you are thinking. Well, all of these charts basically um, show the same, the hotel water use in the same proportions. This chart depicting data gathered from the New Mexico Office of the State Engineer American Water Works Association shows that domestic or restrooms represent the highest water use in hotels. Suggested best practices for some of the various areas of hotels operation shown here will be discussed and the conclusions of which can be used to aid in the development of a hotel action plan. George? Hi. Hi there, this is Adrian. I just wanted to let you know that folks did reply to your, to your question. Two people said cooling and heating, three people said laundry, uh, one person said landscaping, and one person said restrooms. Right, which is what I would have thought, right? Yeah. I couldn't see the replies. Sorry folks, I couldn't see the replies, yeah? Um, but as you can see in the chart here, those are the, the main consumer of water in the hotels is the guest rooms and restrooms. Yeah, thank you very much for your participation, folks. Thanks, Adriana. My pleasure. All right, now, the high water use in guest rooms is typically associated with toilets, showers, bathtubs, and bathroom faucets. Some guest rooms may include a kitchen, which will have additional water use. All inefficient shower heads should be replaced with low flow shower heads and faucets fitted with water efficient aerators. These can lower consumption to as little as 1.5 gallons per minute without negatively impacting the guests. Now this is down from 2.5 gallons per minute normally or even up to 5 gallons per minute in some cases that we, when we have done audits we have seen this. Consideration should be given to changing old toilets to newer, more efficient models. These newer water-saving toilets save, use 50 to 75% less and can significantly reduce the total water consumption of a hotel. This presents a good opportunity for cost saving and water saving. If toilet replacement is not feasible, at this time, consider installing water saving toilet retrofits as an alternative. Older toilets, this is important because older toilets can use 3.5, 5 or even up to 7 gallons of water with every flush. New toilets, however, use up to 1.6 gallons per flush and there are even high efficiency toilets that use 1.28 gallons per flush. Now toilets are secret can leak and you will not know that they are leaking water. So I would advise you to also check your toilets regularly for leaks. There are leak detection tablets that you can place in the in the reservoir and within a couple of minutes you'll be able to tell, you or your staff will be able to tell if the toilet has sprung a leak. Now, implementing a towel and linen reuse program to hotel guests will help lower water consumption and appeal to environmentally conscious guests. Programs of this nature can be introduced and maintained at very low cost. It is important to provide adequate space, however, for guests to hang towels so they can completely dry between uses. I have been to hotels which have these programs implemented, but there is a lack of space to hang the towels. And I myself found, found that I just put it on the floor um, to be changed because I couldn't find anywhere to really hang the towel. So this is this is an important, this is a small but important piece of information. Towel and linen reuse programs, however, are only effective if staff comply with guest re requests. So standardizing your housekeeping procedures and offering water conservation training to staff will significantly improve your results. Now, as with guest room facilities, 
common area restrooms can be made water efficient by applying similar modifications. However, male common area restrooms may have urinals, which often have potential for efficiency modifications. There's a point I want to note here. Um, everyone knows about the infrared and ultrasonic sensors that automatically flush flushometer valve toilets and urinals, but these do not save water. Rather, these devices make toilets and urinals fully hands-free. But these devices should be carefully adjusted to avoid automatic flushing when not required. Um, example being your guests walk past, simply walk past the urinals and they're flushing automatically. And before your your patrons can fully utilize the your fancy facilities to the toilets flush a couple times before they are they are ready. Yeah? Toilets and urinals can account for nearly one third of a building's water consumption. So the inefficiencies and poorly maintained toilets and urinal fixtures can be a major source of water waste. I would also advise if possible, that you can consider using alter alternative sources of non-potable water for toilet and urinal flushing, like rainwater harvesting or reusing gray water from the laundry for these functions. There's another question that I would like to ask. Hopefully, I'll be able to see the answers. No, I'm not sure. But if not, Adriana, you can probably help me there. Um, if you guys had assistance in creating a plan, would you consider using rainwater or reusing gray water for toilet flushing? You can indicate by just saying yes or no. Um, I just want to see where um, where you're at and if you'll be willing to you know change the current your current um, patterns to save water and reuse gray water. I've got two yeses so far. Yes, yes, yes. I have a question. Can you cover gray water retrofits at some point or rainwater retrofits and the economics of it? Sure. Um, I'll do that at the end. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Someone said yes. I, I would use rainwater for grounds and gardens. Yeah, yes. because the... A lot of yeses. <laughs> a lot of yeses. Okay, but well, this, yes. this is good. So that means that we are all on the same page because this water that we are flushing down the toilet is perfectly drinkable, yeah? And if there are alternatives, we can look at using these instead. All right, thank you, guys. All right, moving on to water, conserving water when landscaping. Now, this is an area we don't really want to irrigate during the middle of the day. Although it may be more convenient for staff for whatever reason to water during the midday period, but this is a wasteful practice. Watering pla water plants only in the mornings and evenings to minimize water loss through evaporation. I know that the ground staff is at work during the, well, the daylight hours, and no one really wants to go outside and water the lawn during darkness. But you can find yourself using a quarter of the water that you would normally have to use during the midday period if you water during either early in the morning or you know, just before it gets just before it gets um, dark. You can try to get the staff to go into this mode of watering then. Okay. Um, Make, we also want to be making sure that the irrigation me methods that you use only deliver plants to only deliver water to plants that need it, and only water the plants. Um, I know many many of us we have um, sprinkler systems which water all of our pathways, and it delivers plants uh, water to our plants really like uh, palm trees and different other items like that that really don't need watering every day. But we can look at adjusting just how these how these sprinkler systems and these drip irrigation systems work, just to just to um, make sure that 
you know, you're not wasting the water. Now, when landscaping your property, one of the things that you can do is plant plants with similar water requirements together, group them together and plant them together. And consider making plants native to your environment a major part of the property's landscaping. We are from the Caribbean, I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm not able to see who, where everyone is from, but things like bougainvillea that are native to the Caribbean um, that don't require lots of water but they are beautiful, they have a beautiful flower, they can be used in many different ways like um, for security fencing. Um, however, but that's just an example, but just use plants that are native to the environment. These will not require quite as much uh, watering as if you were to import plants from uh, around the world and put it into your environment. Also, monitor your ground system if it's on a timer. Get your staff to monitor the ground system and ensure that they're turned off when it's raining. You might have it on an automatic timer to come on at, let's say, 6 o'clock in the evening. But if it's raining, there's absolutely no reason for it to come on. So just monitor and make sure that they turn it off, they, they pay attention and turn it off once the rain is falling as well. You really want to be inspecting the irrigation equipment regularly and repairing any leaks, any leaks that may come up promptly. Because you may be thinking that you are watering your plants, but in fact, leaks in the irrigation system, they will just flow in one area and 99% of the time, if there's a leak in the system, the water is not getting to where you want it to go. So you're thinking you're wasting water and the water isn't getting to the plants you really want it to get to. Yeah. And this is another area you may consider using gray water and rain, harvested rainwater. Gray water can be sourced from laundry and different areas around the facility. And there are treatments that you can, filtration systems that you can put to make sure that it doesn't, um, once you use it in a timely manner, it doesn't smell or it doesn't irritate the guests or anything like that. So this is an area that you will really would utilize gray water or rain, harvested rain water. Now, whether laundry is done in-house or contracted out to a third party, there is an opportunity to reduce the associated water consumption. Offering a towel and linen reuse program to hotel guests is a great place to start. I can't say that enough. That's why I put it in a couple couple times. Yeah. When guests participate in a towel and linen reuse program, water is saved with very little cost or effort on the part of the hotel. It is important, however, to make signs communicating the, the program's ease of use, easy to find, and easy to understand. In addition to clear instructions on how to participate, a message about the value of water and the need to conserve will help stimulate participation. Replace outdated washing machines with high water use. You can replace these with more efficient models wherever possible and ensure that only full loads are washed. If your laundry is done in-house, like I said earlier, this is a perfect source of gray water. So you can, you can realize significant savings by recycling this water. All right, let's discuss water efficiency in the kitchen. The kitchen, however, is it can be a difficult area to control water use. And you wouldn't necessarily want to interrupt water availability by fitting low flow aerators here. You actually need water flow in this area when cooking filling pots, kettles, etc. But we should consider, however, making sure that the faucets have that the faucets have a pressure spray option for manually washing dishes. This will reduce water consumption. Saving water in this area really comes from training your staff and good practices, such as um, running dishwashers with a full load whenever possible, and pre-soaking dishes and utensils in a basin of water before cleaning. This will 
ease the removal of food. Avoid using, training your staff to avoid using uh, excessive amounts of dishwashing detergents and discouraging practices such as thawing the food, thawing vegetables, thawing and washing vegetables under running water, washing vegetables in a basin of water instead of under a running tap and promoting natural defrosting by thawing frozen foods in a refrigerator are better options. So there are the kitchen, the, there are not many automatic fixes for the kitchen. It really depends on your procedures and how well you, um, how good your, how conservative your practices are. So here it comes back down to staff training. I know some some of us uh, it is it might be a little difficult because we have been so accustomed doing things one way, but it will really save um, water in the end and save the company lots of capital too. Now, this is one of my favorite ones here because I, I had not considered this option here for quite some time until I really did my investigations into it. The Unseen Ice Machine. It sounds a bit like a title from a, I don't know, a horror movie or something, but it probably is. It's fitting for this because one of the biggest offenders in terms of inefficiency is a water-cooled ice, mach ice machine with a once-through cooling system. While the end product of an ice machine is frozen, a large amount of heat is generated in the ice making process. This heat is cooled via a water or air chilling system. Water-cooled units may consume substantially more water than is needed to make ice. This equipment, when it's properly maintained, can use between a hundred to a thousand gallons of water daily. But unfortunately, these, these systems, these once through systems are not often well maintained and consume significantly more water than is required for cooling and energy and electricity too as well, I may add. So when you're looking for ice machines, Air cooled units are typically more water efficient than water cooled machines. However, you should take care in selecting these air cooled machines because not all air cooled machines are energy efficient. Yeah, it's a toss up between water efficiency and energy efficiency. So you should look for machines labeled with the, I guess, the Energy Star label um, that save water and energy compared to other conventional uh, models and these just like the toilets these are if they leak you will is is very hard for you to detect a leak in these so it's also very um, important for you to check for leaks in these machines regularly um, I kind of went through these slides uh, a little fast I hope I did I didn't want to really keep make the presentation too long so I have at the end here I would like to share something with you here before we go into questions and comments and that kind of stuff I want we should be proactive in addressing the issue of water scarcity making your operation more efficient should be deliberate water scarcity uh, water scarcity could become a limiting factor for tourism development with serious economic consequences. Some of the destinations represented here are known water scarce areas. Some may say this is an area of concern, but I say due to the dangers presented by climate change, expected sea level rise can pose a significant threat to local freshwater resources through seawater intrusion into coastal aquifers. And being that we are from the Caribbean region, increased frequency of tropical storms and floods can and will affect water quality. Also consider this. Water scarcity can arise from a physical lack of water or from a lack of adaptive capacity 
including infrastructure and water management capacity with which to manage and distribute water sources effectively. So let's be proactive to prevent instead of always reacting to occurrences of avoidable calamities. Let's be putting in a plug for my company here. Let's be earth smart and live a good life. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask now or comment now. Thanks, Adrian. Thank Thanks. you so much. That was so great. Thank you so much, George, for that presentation and all of those fun facts. I appreciate all of the engagement throughout the webinar. I hope the attendees do as well. Um, so I'm going to kick it over to Adriana because she's going to lead the question and answer session. I'm sure you guys all have a ton of questions, so keep them coming. Um, thank you again, George, for that. That was excellent. Um, so I'll give it to you, Adriana, since you have all the questions. I have here two questions. Um, from, um, not two questions, two statements rather, from Ted Bogle, and uh, he says, El Conquistador in Puerto Rico stated at Chief last fall that out of all of the hotels in their resort group, there was on, there was, theirs was the only golf course that was profitable, profitable based on gray water use. And they go 54 days without rain and are still able to water the golf course. Uh, they said that they have over, is this right, 9 million gallons, is that right, of water storage in the pond on the golf course. Um, yeah. Wayne is asking, what are your thoughts on wastewater treatment plants? Is it efficient and cost effective? Ye wastewater treatment plants, yes. I. Um, they are efficient, they are cost effective, it wants to balance out what you can get in return. Um, reusing and recycling, they, they enable us to reuse and recycle water, which we, which we can apply to many different areas of our operations. You can, like I said, you can put it into, into the garden, you can use it into the toilets, it really is, it, it, can be as profitable or as um, not profitable as you, because some people store the gray water and they don't utilize it, so they would not necessarily see the same returns. Like in the in the instance that was just mentioned about the golf courses, I'm sure that their golf course is lush, it is pretty, it is we use it. it is being watered regularly, all without you having to tap into the the natural, um, the potable water supply from the from the mains. Um, so yes, I think that their water, based water treatment plants are are affordable and they are worthwhile investing in, especially. Um, in all right, there's another question here from Kevin. Um, as there are water shortages, water shortage issues in the Caribbean. What methods and strategies can be can be used? Water shortages. Okay, well, um, a lot of the things that I'm not seeing done are damming. We don't dam for water to capture water during our um, really rainy seasons. Like for instance, in Barbados, I can say for a fact, um, because that's where I'm from, most of our water, if not all of it, is groundwater, and we capture it from aquifers, but with the challenging and changing and unpredictable weather patterns that we've been getting of late, where what the rain comes, it rain it does fall, but it falls very hard. It comes down very sudden, a lot of it, and a lot of it just runs off the the earth and it runs back into the sea. So I would say that for us, managing the water that is actually coming for us is paramount. Dam, putting dams in place or finding some way of capturing this runoff, this water runoff could significantly improve our, our, our conditions. Okay, um, another question, should laundry be on an off-peak schedule as well? On an off-peak schedule? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't really um, tell you the truth, I don't really get, uh, can you, can you clear up a little bit, because I don't really get the question. Can, I think it was, Danae, was that you that asked the question, can someone, well, 
while we while we get clarification on that question, I'm going to read something that Eddie Anton just wrote. He says, Wait, hold uh, on. I, "Hello." Unless, unless the unless the question was being asked, if it should be done um, in the evening as opposed to during the day. Oh yeah, she says that run later in the evenings as opposed to during the day. That's exactly what she was asking. Yes. Okay. Um, not necessarily. What the important thing about when you are doing laundry is that you make sure that you get full loads. Yeah. Don't run a quarter load because it, you, the machines uh, typically use a lot of water anyway. So you just really want it saves a lot more water if you run full load. So it doesn't really matter what part of the day that you actually run the cycle, as long as you try to run full loads with every cycle. Okay. Um, Eddie Anton has a question. My situation is a bit different since we produce our own water through desalina uh, desalination process. However, this does not leave out a necessity to manage the cost of producing uh, additional water. What measures would be best to reduce the cost of additional products when using the water in laundry services and other domestic use? Uh, well, I, I, regardless of where your water supply is coming from, I will always advocate for the, reducing the demand. So I would still advocate for low flow shower heads. I will still advocate for low flow aerators wherever possible. In the laundry area, like I, I running, like I said in the presentation, running a towel and linen reuse program is very effective. You see hotels around the world are utilizing this method to save water. What this does, it not only engages the, the guests and make them feel a part of something, a part of a bigger a bigger process, but it also, you know, it, it reduces the load put in the laundry area. Um, if you can have a hotel guest using one towel through their entire stay rather than using five or six, five or six towels, that that's, you know, for each guest, that's a lot of loads, you know. So I would mm -hmm. I would say um, utilizing, uh, implementing a towel or laundry or linen reuse pro reuse program would be the best way to go. Now I have a question as being the um, a marketing and communications person. I'm just curious to know how effective is it to uh, have an effective campaign to teach the guests the importance of their their role in water conservation for the hotel and for the island. And are there any techniques that have worked particularly well in getting that point across to hotels? Yeah, for Not sure. To uh, guests, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The signs, posters, posters are very effective. You know, when the guests are in the room, just hang them. Those hanging, those door hangers, just hang them up with the information that you want to to relay. Guests on their off time, they I they, I'm I'm sure nine out of ten times they read those those um, leaflets. And they are very responsive when it comes to saving once it's brought to their attention. Also, um, it doesn't take very much off of the hotel to produce these. They are low cost, you know, and we always have to manage costs associated with, um, with all of our activities as well. These signs placed in strategic places throughout the, the property will help engage the guests. But what will also help is another low cost effective method which is training the staff just have the staff mention it just mention it to the hotel guests and that mentioning it when they check in will go a long way they'll be on the lookout for the signs and the signs will be like a reminder for them to just try to help help save um, water in the environment help save local fresh water resources stuff like that so I find that the the signage around the hotel is a very cost effective and effective method method to use. Okay. Uh, Jason is asking, why haven't the organizations made it mandatory to use rainwater for certain purposes in the industry? Why isn't it a standard? Well, I can't really answer that. I can assume, but um, 
unless things, from my experience, unless things are legis legislated and there are penalties associated with um, certain actions, uh, people don't necessarily find it necessary to follow these things. And like I said earlier in the presentation too, these water, water is subsidized. So therefore, uh, we really do associate worth with what we pay. So in the minds of a lot of people, we do not really associate it as being high, or high on our priority list, which is unfortunate because it is basically it is more valuable than electricity. It is more valuable than anything else that we that we have as a utility. We call it we die. Yeah. Um, on a, from a, a common sense and a, a standpoint, it seems as though we should we should treasure it, but um, from an organizational standpoint i don't think it's the easiest thing to implement because of its uh, its 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 perceived worth and value but adriana you you probably will be a better in a better position to ask that question <laughs> of why why the um why, why the organization has not made it mandatory for um <laughs> for members to, to reuse rainwater <laughs> you know? oh my goodness why are you doing that to me <laughs> <laughs> um, Denise is probably giggling on her end because we do a lot to try to educate folks from the CHTA perspective and through CAST with webinars like these to, especially for the Caribbean, we are so reliant and dependent on our environment that yeah. just on a human level it behooves us to, to, to take care of it, but in a financial and economic sense, our business is based on our environment. Um, our beaches are the biggest draw. So yeah, it should be absolutely priority. Why it isn't, we we have we have yet to understand that one. What do you maybe Danae has more insight we will, on that? We will have to we will definitely have to lobby our um our political powers that be um, because it is um, part of when you have a new hotel development coming in it should be mandated it should be part of the requirements as Absolutely. opposed to giving concessions they should be giving um, uh, mandates that when you have a new development come in place um, that they be, be required to have their own uh, renewable energy and renewable water resource supply um, that does not draw from the current um, country but also enhances the current country's water supplies and provisions so that's something that we need to really speak out from an advocacy standpoint to get the message across and lobby for that and we can do that through our advocacy committee um, we will be focusing a lot more on climate change and the effects of what that will bring um, we also have resources through um, CIMH whom we've partnered with they'll be sending out some climate bulletins and different things for you guys so be aware um, it's posted on our cast web page it's posted on our Facebook page um, different information so you guys can use that to kind of pre-plan for when you are going to be in you know, drought or when you're going to see an abundance of rain, um, taking that information and understanding how climate change is going to affect um, just the weatherization in our um, countries is really important. So we're doing our best to get that resource out to you. Um, and we're hoping that through, um, you know, our partnerships with CTO, with CIMH, CAST, and um, CHCA, that we can move that forward on the agenda. Um, Another thing that I did want to note is um, to the question or to the point about encouraging guests to get involved, not just signage to get them involved, but facts so that they understand in the place that they're at why water is very important. Um, people go on, tr they travel because they want to understand the destination, they want to know certain things and they want to relax. We see a lot of travelers being more immersive, more responsible, and um, just really understanding what it means to understand that place and that culture. Giving fun facts about why you're doing these things encourages them to understand and um, mm -hmm. to really to it and not only just do it because it's a placard that says it but because they care about the environment where they're in they know why it's precious to you so mix in when you mix in those instructions to guests also mix in a quick little fun fact you know about okay this water you know this, we're saving water saving this amount of water leads to water for X amount of something great. Um, you know, encouraging them through fun facts and information about where this water resource is coming from or where it could be relocated or where it could be reused if they use less is always very effective in encouraging the guests to get more involved. I, I, I agree. I think we need to do more, at a better job, I think, at, at showcasing the value of, 
of conservation uh, and, and from the human perspective, of course, and then also from the financial perspective, show all of the, the economic impact and all of that, but putting a face to conservation. And I think the problem is a lot of people don't see it as an imminent concern, something that right. is affecting us right now and yeah. something that needs to be addressed now, not later, exactly. but now. Um, and even amongst yes. your staff, just really quickly, sorry, even amongst your staff, yeah. um, just how you saw the different ways in which each area or each um, section uses water, I mean, have a mini competition, encourage them, have kitchen staff versus, you That's know, your housekeeping idea. staff to see what, in what areas you guys are reducing water use to get the staff engaged because, you know, be, um, the any, least amount any of water season. to carry exactly. out a task. Exactly. So that's a fun fact or a good idea that um, I, I have seen work from a um, hotel operations perspective that has really gotten people fired up to really be concerned about conserving water. Okay. Uh, Daphne has a question. Uh, how can we as a, hotel as a National Hotel and Tourism Association encourage members to be water efficient? Any tips? All right. Well, from my perspective, I would say um, information. People, I, I do not generally think that people are, they neglect this be on purpose. I think that awareness is a, a, a very important part of it. And if it's not in your face, you don't, I mean, hoteliers are busy people. Yeah, and they're bombarded with guest requests. They're bombarded with trying to keep their businesses operational and stuff. And I think that the campaign, the campaigns, the awareness campaigns need to be a little more aggressive because if I, I believe that if we keep the awareness there, that people, the hoteliers will respond. Yeah, the organizations, the organization members will respond. So I believe in humans and I believe that we are, we are uh, good and we are looking to do good for our environment. So I believe uh, the awareness campaign being more prominent and more aggressive would significantly improve that. And I would like to add as well, Daphne, um, you know, be bold with them. Uh, t you know, ha transparency is key. You know, have everybody submit their water bills for the past 12 months and do an audit and, you know, Again, a competition is always a great way to encourage people. Um, say you're going to, you know, if you can link with a local, um, a local provider who does water audits or who does water conservation or call or smart, um, see if they'd be willing to work with your um, hotel and tourism association to run um, a contest. And whoever is able to, I guess, save or do something or win that contest may win um, a few upgrades or may be able to get a, um, a, a half-day audit. Or, um, you know, you have to incentivize people. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Um, we're all, you know, every day when we look at how can we encourage people to conserve more, how can we get the information out there, it needs to be fun and engaging. Run a social media campaign of different fun facts that they can post in and around their hotel of ways that they are conserving water. That's a way to market them. That's the way for them to get their name out there. They can learn Twitter, start to be on social mm -hmm. media. If they haven't, contact Adriana. She can help you set up a Twitter <laughs> campaign, you know, and um, just make it fun for them. Um, it doesn't always have to be, you know, combing through bills and looking at numbers. It can be a fun resource and create a, a game out of it or, or encourage them to say, listen, the person who has the most hits on Facebook because you're running a water conservation campaign um, maybe they'll get, um, you know, an incentive from you as a hotel association. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll get an opportunity to speak or a reduction in their membership or an additional Actually, that's, on their board. that's genius because when we've done our cast photo, photo challenge on social media, hotels really get behind it because they're excited about sharing the results and the things that they've done in the programs and the effort their people have put into uh, conservation and sustainability. So give them an opportunity to show off. They want to, they want to show all the good that they've done, and they've done a lot, I'm sure. So that incentivizes them to continue it, and it encourages other people to do the same, and it also raises your awareness as a, as a property and as a hotel association. So get out there, leverage. I don't know if all of you know, but Chief is, is taking place in June here in, in Miami, you should all come. We have various sustainability tracks and, and sessions, one of them led by the brilliant Denae Hines. And she is not only a sustainability director, she's also our two-time golden hashtag champion. This lady know, knows how to leverage social, social as work. well as sustainability. <laughs> so 
hey, let's take a page from Denise's book and, and actually get people excited about it. Um, I have a comment here from Wayne. He says, we can also save water consumption by reporting leaking faucets to maintenance immediately for repair. And Jason Brewster comments, what I realized from working in the industry is the hotels are very sensitive to their star rating and they market through that premise. So attaching sustainability to that would be would give them good encouragement. Uh -huh. That is brilliant, actually. Yeah. Agreed. That's a genius idea. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think we're about ready to... Oh, wait a minute. Wayne also has another comment that says, we can sensitize team members by providing them with the cost and consumption and measure the cost of a leaking faucet in an effort to reducing water consumption. So tell them by you know, by fixing, by helping us fix this, you've saved this much or you've created, caused this impact, showing people uh, the the results of their efforts, which is a great idea. Excellent. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap up. Danae, any last words? Um, yes, just to make sure, thank you all for attending. We appreciate um, you being here um, and taking this information. Adriana will send you out the information. We encourage you to also, yes, be here at Chief June 2nd to the 4th and then stay a while for the Taste of the Caribbean. Um, and if you're interested in getting more involved or have any ideas with CAST, um, Caribbean Alliance for Sustainable Tourism, we are the sustainability arm of CHTA. We welcome um, any suggestions, ideas, um, or assistance by being one of our board and, and working with us on our governing council to further advance sustainability in, sustain, in um, the Caribbean, specifically in our tourism enterprises. So um, thank you again for your time. We hope you learned and were able to discuss a lot. And um, you can contact any of us at any time um, through our website. <laughs> I'm sorry, I laughed because Ted said that you hacked the golden hashtag. The Russians helped Danae hack the golden hashtag. They did not, Ted. They did not. And Daphne says that she'll see us at Chief. We look forward to seeing you, Daphne. Please send me an email. She, she wanted to reach out to me. Our, all of our contact information will be available in the email that you'll be getting from me later today. Uh, George, any comments to close? Yes, just one, one more thing. Um, there are additional resources on the Water Conservation that are, uh, are available on the CHTA website um, through the CAS. So you, once you are a member, you just log in, and there are toolkits. There, there's a toolkit on water, water oh, conservation. Oh, yes, I'm remiss to say that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are launching our water toolkit today. Thank you, EarthSmart. Yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there so everyone knows that there are additional resources available once you log in to, through CAS, yeah? So that's I will it. do. I will put all of that in the email. I'll make sure, sure. everybody gets it. And I would like to thank CAS for inviting me to participate in such an important, to me, an important initiative, yeah? Thank you, Adriana. Thank you, Denny, for um, your hospitality and for opening up the floor to me, yeah? And thank you all for attending today's session. And that's it from EarthSmart. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you so much. As you know, all of our social media is up. And you will be able to reach out to us through social, through the website, through our emails. Again, an email will go out to you uh, later today with all of our contact information. So until then, be well. Hope to see you all at Chief. And have a wonderful day. Thank you all for participating. Have a good one. Thank you.